Hello everybody, Sanier, Engineer, MBA and Investor. In today's video, I want to talk about Ginkgo Bioworks marketing team. So this is actually a different type of video because usually in my videos, I often talk about the financial side of things or even the science, right? Or of course, looking at programs, looking at how different programs differ. And of course, talking about technologies that specific companies are working with. For example, CRISPR Cas9 versus base editors, prime editors. We're talking about CRISPR in vivo versus a CRISPR ex vivo. So, quite a lot of talk about in technology side of things. Of course, everything we've done in this channel is looking at the science, but also the financial sides, right? How can you explain certain businesses, commercial side of things? Because I think there's a, a merge between the financial, the business side, and the tech side, the R&D side, right? There's always a merge in this type of industry. And that's how you can sort of hopefully calculate the probability of success for certain companies, right? But I want to talk about something else here that I've actually never talked about in this channel is marketing. And I just want to preface by saying I'm not saying it's bad or good. I'm just talking about what I'm thinking about right now on this beautiful Monday on the 29th of August 2022. I was going to this feed here and I saw this tweet. Biotech most successful startups, Ginkgo, one of the cacornical synthetic biology companies of this era. And then I saw this image that you're looking at here. And there's a couple of things going on in this image, but I think what I want to talk, and obviously this is not Ginkgo Bioworks tweeting did, this is a separate entity, but I want to talk about this because there's something I noticed here, and it's actually something that's really, really something that's specific to Ginkgo Bioworks out of all the genomics company that we've covered so far. And of course, each of these companies have their own marketing firms. I mean, obviously we've seen these expenses with administrative sales and admin marketing and so on for each of these companies. You can find that in their balance sheet and so on after each quarter. But I think Ginkgo Bioworks marketing team is very interesting because if you take a look at the Twitter account from Ginkgo Bioworks, take a look at some of the images that they've sort of used. Again, I don't know where this is from. Is it from the website? I've seen this a couple of times, but is it their marketing team? Did they outsource it? Who knows? The point is not where it's coming from. The point is how they're utilizing the sets of marketing, you know, technique, right? And it's sort of giving you an image, right, of the future. And of course, Ginkgo Bioworks is all about that. It's all about giving you hope of a future where obviously you can recreate certain materials and even live an organism like you see dinosaur here. Whether we're gonna reach there or not, you know, I don't think anybody here is here to like dispute that or to have an argument. So it, will we reach exactly this state? I don't think that's the point of this image. It's just to get your brain, brains juicing. But that's the key, right? That's what a marketing team is able to do. A marketing team is able to convey this message of the company, the mission statement of this company, back to the investors, back to the public in a way, in an image, in maybe a paragraph, maybe a video format, where it's able to convey this message in a way where it's actually attractive and sort of, you know, gain more attention and publicity for the better, right? And this is what this type of image is doing. And again, that previous image we were looking at, again, not Ginkgo, but I've noticed that every time we talk about Ginkgo Bioworks, there's always something that's tied to something like this, right? If you look at their IPO when they went IPO, let's mute this uh, so that it doesn't echo. Look at this. When they went IPO, they put these flowers, they put this dinosaur, look at the logo, and obviously logo matters, but look at everything that's going here. Um, and then if you take a look at some other tweets they've done, look at this, this image where you're talking about molecules here, you have an oxygen and OH bond, double bond here, and you have a carbon string here, and you can see here this molecule, but then around it, they start putting strawberries, flowers, oranges, um, peaches, whatever. I mean, it's just an interesting way of marketing, right? And if you go in their website, I mean, the website is pretty standard. There's nothing fancy about that. Um, but if we can look at, maybe uh, look at our work, let's take a look. Will they keep repeating? Probably not, but, um, oh, the future food, maybe here. Look at this. Sorry, my internet is slow today. It's really slow. I don't know why, but um, anyways, like uh, as this is loading up. Um, so my point of this video is that I think by Gecko Bioworks is doing something really interesting. 
not only they're trying to merge the technology with financials, just like every other company, but I think they're trying to do something with marketing. I don't think genomics companies are known to be really good at marketing. And this really, there's a big parallel here. And I think this is really an interesting parallel. And bear, me, bear with me for a second. Computers, internet, marketing, if you guys remember in the 90s, it was nothing, right? There was really nothing significant about marketing in you know computers, personal computers. And you fast forward that to today, the way we market smartphones, the way we market graphics card, the way we market computers, it's just an interesting way, right? It's just an interesting way of conveying this message. And it's just like how we went to like a underground type of technology to the mainstream where, you know, we're sort of obliged there to promote the technology like iPads, iPhones, you know, you look at smart technologies, you like at what, you know, simple things like iRobots from Amazon, you know, the value, it just, it's just really interesting. There was, there's something to be said here, and I'm not sure if it's gonna resonate with people watching this channel. I think most of us are really focusing on the R&D side of things or worst case at the financial side of things. But I think there's something to be said about the marketing side of things. And I think there is a, a place for these companies, genomics companies, in this case, Ginkgo Bioworks, CRISPR companies, and so on, to utilize marketing to sort of convey this message. It's not about falsifying message or lying to the public. It has nothing to do with that. It's just utilizing these funds from the public, you know, obviously from public shareholders, you know, of course raising cash or making money from revenues and reinvesting in the business where you can sort of convey that message to investors. Uh, because there's one thing I learned working in a B2B industry is that marketing really does matter. Just like B2C, uh, for B2B, it really does matter. And last I check, whatever Ginkgo is doing here, this is B2B, really focus on B2B. And the first thing you want to do, and at least the, one of the first things you want to do as a company is make sure that the message is conveyed properly. And the only way to do that, the only way to do that is with proper marketing. Let me know in the comments below what you guys are saying. Again, different type of video get your brains juicing here. Hopefully you guys appreciate it. The point here wasn't to talk about specific ginkgo bioworks, but just the power of marketing and how it impacts the genomics field. Thank you so much for watching. Like this video if you found value, subscribe if you're not, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.